it may sound like a lofty thing to say on VH1, but basically, you know, what are we doing on this planet? Um, I think through the Beatle experience that we'd had, we'd grown so many years within a short period of time. I'd experienced so many things and met so many people, but I realized there was nothing actually that was giving me a buzz anymore. I, I, was, I wanted something better. I, I remember thinking, I'd love to meet somebody who will really impress me. I don't mean because somebody like, you know, Burt Lancaster, because he was in a movie. Right. I mean, I met Burt Lancaster and he impressed me on that level, but I meant somebody who could really impress me. And that's when I met Ravi, which was funny, because he's this little fella <laughs> with an obscure instrument from our point of view, and yet it led me into such depths. And um, I think that was, that's the most important thing. It still is for me. You know, I get confused when I look around at the world and I see everybody's running around. And, you know, as Bob Dylan said, he not busy being born is busy dying. And yet nobody's trying to figure out what's the cause of death and what happens when you die. I mean, that to me is the only thing really that's of any importance. The rest is all secondary. Do you think pop musicians are afraid to <clears throat> deal with subjects that are so big or it just doesn't occur to them or do people think, oh, it's not commercial enough, who wants to talk about life itself? I don't know what anybody else thinks and, um, you know, as the years have gone by, I seem to have found myself more and more out on a limb as far as, you know, that kind of thing goes. I mean, even close friends of mine, you know, they maybe don't want to talk about it because they don't understand it. but. I believed in the thing that I read years ago, which I think was in the Bible. It said, knock and the door will be opened. And it's true. If you want to know anything in this life, you just have to knock on the door, whether that be some physically on somebody else's door and ask them a question, or which I was lucky to find is the meditation. Is, you know, it's all within. Because if you think about it, there isn't anything I mean, in creation, the whole of creation that <clears throat> is perfect. You know, there is nothing that goes wrong with nature. Only what man does, then it goes wrong. But we are made of that thing. The very essence of our being, of every atom in our body, is made from this perfect knowledge, this perfect consciousness. But superimposed on that is through, if I can use the word, the tidal wave of bull that goes through the world. It's cable, you can say that. Yeah, so there's this, we're being barraged by, um, you know, by bull. But not only that, the way the world is structured or the way creation is structured, we have duality which says yes, no, good, bad, loss, gain, birth, death. And it's a, this circle that you get trapped in. It's like the Memphis Blues again. And that's the hardest thing to <clears throat> to understand what is causing um, both of these things, what's causing day and night, good and bad. It's all the, the cause and this is the effect. So, I mean, we're getting really transcendental here, but well, to no, say I, that it, our, our physical being is really um, on a very, very subtle level, it's just like the sap in a tree mm -hmm. is is the sap and it runs throughout all the parts of the tree. Now it's like that, our bodies are manifesting into physical bodies, but the cause of the sap is pure consciousness, pure awareness, and that is perfect and perfect knowledge, but we have to tap into that to understand it. And that's really why, to, for me, this record's important, because it's another little key to open up the within for each individual to be able to see it and turn off um, turn off your mind, relax, and float downstream. And, and why do you think that it drove you to search for something deeper as opposed to someone like Elvis who had a hard time handling it? Actually, Elvis, I think, looked for something deeper too. Um, yeah, I, because I know, I know that he was, he, you know, at different times he was involved with um, different organizations and. Uh, I mean, it was sad about Elvis. I think um, compared to the Beatles, um, Elvis, I always saw it, the problem for him was that he was the only one who had that experience. Whereas like you know, for we you. hippies, you know, so it takes more people to have that, share the experience. 
Uh, I mean, the four of us all experienced the thing, and in a way we gained strength and supported each other uh, in the turmoil. But, yeah, I think fame is a good thing in terms of giving you uh, heightened experience or, or at least more experience. And, um, but then it's what you do with that or what, what that uncovers. I think, for me, you know, as I say, I realize I want to, you know, I just want more. This isn't it. This isn't it, you know. Um, fame is not the goal. Money, you know, although money is nice to have, it can buy you a bit of freedom. You know, you can go to the Bahamas when you want. But it doesn't, it's not the answer. And the answer, you know, is um, how to get peace of mind and how to be happy. That's really what we're supposed to be here for. And... Uh, the difficult thing is that we all go through our lives and through our days and we don't experience bliss and you know it's a very subtle thing and uh, to experience that and to be able to know how to do that is uh, something you don't just stumble across you've got to search for it did you experience bliss on stage or in the studio um, in a way did performing it put you in touch with with that with that bliss well, we had happiness at times, and um, but you know, not the kind of bliss I mean, where like every atom of your body is just buzzing, you know, because it's again, it's beyond the mind. It's like you know, it's it's when there's no thought involved. That I mean, it's it's a pretty tricky thing to try to um, <coughs> to get to that stage because it means controlling the mind and being able to transcend the relative states of consciousness waking sleeping dreaming which is all we we really know uh, but there is another state that um, goes beyond all that and it's in that state that's where you know the bliss and the knowledge uh, you know that that's available is I know the one uh, benefit concert that you've done in England in the past uh couple of 20 years or so was for the natural law party back in 92 I believe mm. what brought that about well it was um, one of the things that made it easier was I'd just done a tour of Japan with Eric Clapton's band so I was kind of up to speed with um, the songs that I was doing and I had a, the band was there that knew all the material but that was I think there was a general election going on and as far as I'm concerned Whichever, you know, the Neil Innes, you know, from... Uh, the Ruddles. The Ruddles. He wrote a song once and he said, no matter who you vote for, the government always gets in. And it's like that, you know, in, in England, you always get, um, as far as I was concerned, the left, the centre and the right, they're all really the same. They're all different shades of the same greyness. And although it was a long shot, you know, Maharishi tried to get these people formed together into a party which would be called the Natural Law Party, which was... Um, the same Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And the idea behind it really is to have consciousness as the basic thing, because if uh, really, you know, we get in government or we get in any situation in life, we get the reflection of our own consciousness. We can't really complain about what we have because that is us. It's a reflection of our, our own being. Now, if we could have um, people who are actually conscious in a spiritual sense, then all the underlying problems to society, I mean, it wouldn't be able to change just overnight, but over a generation or two generations, you could have things where, for instance, say in England, and I'm sure it's the same here, you get disease so you've got a lot of expenditure on hospitals and on fixing up people who have disease now the problem is that most doctors they study disease they don't know about health so you'd need to reprogram stuff so that you teach people about how to be healthy that way you don't spend so much money on on disease you'd have people would be healthier you wouldn't have such a you know a requirement for you know all this all the various things that take up all the money you'd be able to use that money for something else so the natural law that operates on this planet or in the universe everything as i said earlier everything works in a perfect order 
and there's a scheme to things which has a certain intelligence that drives it and makes everything work. Now, if we as individuals could go to that level of consciousness where we can bring it into our being, and as Maharishi, Maharishi Yogi once said, for a forest to be green, each tree must be green. So it's no use just one or two people being you know, like this. You'd have to make the whole of society, if they had that understanding, and that's what I think really you'd have to, you know, school people, um, right from being children, teach people about their health, about their bodies, about consciousness, because it's all to do with consciousness. Raise the level of consciousness, and then everything automatically becomes better. Do you think it can happen, or do you think people are totally on autopilot too much? It, it can happen, but it's something which will take a long, long time, generations of people. I mean, if you look now, just through, say, from the 60s or the 50s, um, there's a lot more people, thanks to, say, Indian music, thanks to rock and roll music, uh, who have got much more understanding. You go out there on the street now, you can find Indian spice shops, Indian restaurants, and places to go for yoga, for meditation. There's a much higher awareness, generally, uh, on those kind of things. And so it is seeping through. I mean, where did all the really good hippies go when they all dropped out? They're driving Volvos, They're all, George. Well, I don't think all of them are. I think a lot of them are, you know, have, you know, brought up, there's probably two generations of kids now who are much more um, open to that type of consciousness and they've been brought up by you know being vegetarian or whatever that helps the society become you know much more um, balanced that's it's all to do with the balance you know we've got too much extreme going on you're optimistic you have to be optimistic yeah you know I, me too. Yeah. I just uh, it's 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 so funny because when you when you talk to people, it's it's down the middle. Those who think it's getting better, those who think it's getting worse, and those who think it's reflected in the music in all cases. But you know? it is getting better and worse because that's the nature of relativity. You know, good and bad, good and bad. But the individual, you know, uh, if the individual gets um, that consciousness, then it doesn't matter because in a way you can retain the balance between the good and the bad you know because really good and bad are the same um, they are yeah. it's the same sort of thing so it's like in the middle is the safe safe um, path 